Hi, today's movie is the 1972 American slasher film Silent Night, Bloody Night. It's Christmas and what could be more Christmassy than a slasher movie? I don't know much about this movie. I've heard some people say it's terrible, some people say it's good. I'm kind of curious. Slasher movies aren't usually my thing, so let's check out Silent Night, Bloody Night. Atmospheric start. Is that One rain time, or is the film? I have to see this ground. Right. It's beautiful now. I think it's right. As if nothing had happened here. Soon they will tear down the main house, and then nothing will be left. Nothing. Except what I remember. He never lived at home. Until the day before Christmas in 1950, he finally. That's a nice transition. Back. For the last time. Oof. That was unexpected. Wow. That's a really powerful visual. The man on fire and no one there at all to help him. All of us believe that his death was an accident. No one knew that another person had come to Butler House that Christmas. Oof, look at him just burning there in the background. Bloody hell. That is an amazing shot. What is going on? She didn't hear or see any of that. No further inquiry shall be held over the body of the deceased. And this inquest is officially closed. I like this, the voiceover with the photo montage. So far, I'm liking this movie. It's got some style to it. Okay. T title says Death House, even though it's called Silent Night, Bloody Night. I guess it's got a few different titles. A few Andy Warhol personalities in there. This spooky arrangement of Silent Night is very effective. Ooh. Wow, this is interesting. So we're seeing from the point of view of the person who's just escaped from the hospital for the criminally insane. Together. That's really nicely done. Uh oh. Is that the SKP? comments that this film is badly photographed, but I really like the way it's photographed. Very eerie sounds well, too. Tell you, it's beautiful. Can you see the rest of it? Wasn't he in the film with Doris Day, um, Where Were You When The Lights Went Out? Something like that. John Carradine? Mr. Carter. Mr. Mayor. Ooh, what's going on there? Won't you sit there, Mr. Carter? At the head of the table. Everyone Thank looks you. very haunted and disturbed. I am. Uh... Oh no! I heard the dog. <gasps> no! Oh, that's horrible! That's not necessary. I don't care how many people get killed in a horror film, but don't touch the animals. Any dog that appears in a horror film always dies. Why do they do that? 
creepy. Very creepy. The question is, well, do you still want the house? Are you offering it to us, Mr. Carter? I'll wait for your answer until tomorrow. You're spending the night here? Yes. May I ask where? At the butler house. Uh-oh. We could put you up at the motel as our guest. No, no, the house is fine. The Paradise Motel. That's very kind of you, but I'm, I'm meeting Mr. Butler about some uh, personal items. If you want a phone, I can reconnect the line. D don't trouble, please. No trouble. <laughs> you need a phone. Don't want to be stuck out there. <laughs> I really well, love the creepy vibe of this back. town it's council meeting. Thank you. And the fact that they all By have the way, this shared have you knowledge known that Mr. no Butler one's a long communicating time. to him. No, I've never met him. He called me and asked me. Ooh. Slick, really slick. He's a big lawyer, Bill. You've got to expect that. Don't tell me about lawyers. Oh, you see the way he looked at us? You see his clothes? He's doing his job. Just don't tell me about lawyers. You know what I like to see? Two of them like that when talking to each other. Neither one of them would know what to believe. I love you too. Only when I get home, I'm gonna have a nice, nice. Everyone in the council you. seems so disturbed. Oh no, I can't. Well, honey, uh, so has this guy I got a you. wife as well as the lady he's traveling around yes, with, who yes, seems I, to be his girlfriend? I miss me too. Wife uh, and family. Uh, oh, I get. There's so much going on under the surface with all the characters and all the interactions. Down. Move. Okay. Okay. I'd better get going. Do me a favor, Tess. Call Diane. Tell her. Really, I'm going in touch. To how no one explains about John Carradine's character. He seems to have had a stroke or something. He's got some speech difficulty. But no one explained it to the newcomer, and no one's explaining it to us. So I guess the escaped criminally insane person is inside the house now. So he'll get screwed. So is Butler's grandson the escapee from the psychiatric hospital? I'm not clear who that is. Now? Oh yes, oh. it's Howard. Yeah, the phone's working fine. Uh, He's done nice a great talk. job of creating a really uneasy and unsettling atmosphere in this film so far. Even though Honey, nothing's really happened. I'm going really down the happened. car to get some cigarettes. I'm back in a minute. So what happened to all these other people in the photos? as a chopper. I like those characters. I'm sad that they died. Won't you come? Okay, okay. Now you stay put in that house. I'll wait for you. Please, hurry. Oh, that's creepy. I, I'm afraid. Setting now up a trap easy. for the sheriff. I'm coming. Mr. Butler, are you done? Tess, I have come back. What's that? Tess, I want Who? to see you again. Hello? Who is this? You know me, Tess. It's Mary Ann. Tell the mayor. Tell them all. I'm waiting in my father's house. Oof, creepy. Hello? So there's some backstory about her and the killer. So 
So who is this guy? That's the guy from the car before who was trying to hitchhike and smash the windscreen? Is he the killer? That would seem too easy. Who are you? A Jeffrey Butler. Oh, you're the one who's selling the house. Yes. Have you any ID? Come on. Would you like to see my maniac card from the asylum? <laughs> they give you one when you escape. There's a big scarlet M on it so people won't get confused. Okay. Look, I'm sorry about the... So if the killer is not the butler grandson who we saw in the previous scene, who is he? Ooh, diary. Backstory. Ah! Oh! 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 Oh, shovel. Effectively delivering the shocks. Hi. Hi. Did you this find guy could still be the killer because he was out when the murder happened. Now he's just come back. I'm tired. I want to know more about the, the old diary that was found in the cemetery. I want backstory. God damn it! I spoke to you before. Who are you? Who's Mary Ann? Christmas Eve, 1935. So something happened on Christmas Eve, 1935. And it's related to the diary and all of these council people. It's really well filmed. I don't know what that person who thought it was badly filmed was talking about. What's she up to? Oh, the uh, police car's at the house now. Because the killer's driven back there with the body. Interesting that this film features a lot of older characters. I like that it's connected to some mysterious events in the distant past of the Sheriff, house. Sheriff, I saw your car. <laughs> The silhouette almost looked like a woman with long hair. In August 1933, it starts. Wilfred Butler's daughter is cruelly attacked and raped. Her name is Mary Ann. The same name as the caller who left those messages tonight. She's 15 then. On May 2nd, 1934, Mary Ann Butler gives birth to a son, Jeffrey Butler. Jeff. Early in 1935, Butler House is turned over to a Dr. Robinson as an asylum for mental patients. And then Butler goes on to say that he has committed his own daughter. Marianne will live at the asylum. Ooh. There's no end to this story. It's been carefully cut out of all the papers. Why would Toman do that? And if this is her son, they might be working together. It's empty. So I'm guessing one of these older guys is the rapist who's Jeff's father. This is probably all a trap to get him. Jeff, look! Whoosh! <laughs> and did he mean to do that or not? This film has a really great setup. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Hello? Hello, Mr. Mayor. 
Yes, what? This is Marianne Butler. I'm calling from my house. Won't you come over here, Mr. Mayor? I've heard this film was a an inspiration for the film Black Christmas when it because it has the gimmick of the killer calling from inside the house. I could see that. I hope she's got her gun with her from before. One shall ever see it. Not my beloved daughter, or even my grandson, Jeffrey. I write for myself in the hope of forgiveness, if that is still possible. And I write for you, Marianne, whose youth and innocence I have destroyed. Ooh. By 1935, the doctors had treated my daughter for a year. I had believed they could cure her. The child, Jeffrey, was taken from us and sent to California. <laughs> I turned my house into an asylum. I brought Candy doctors darling? to live there. I welcomed other patients. This is great, all this sepia footage of the backstory. I propose a toast. A doctor, please. By Christmas of the first year, I knew that I must act. Not for myself, but for my helpless child. Led him to create this institution. Our friend. I had no plan. All I knew was that I must take her from these men. I promise. Lies. Oh, so creepy. Brilliant to make something as simple as a Christmas meal look creepy like this, like they're vampires or something. So was it the dad who abused Marianne? My cruelty to Marianne was inhuman. I know that. I had loved her. I had fathered our child, Jeffrey. I had brought yes. her to this. But I swear that on that afternoon, all I wanted was to save my child. God. That's pretty hideous. I knew what they might do if these inmates were freed. And this is my guilt. I knew. And still, I freed them. Gosh, this use of sepia is really effective. Presenting the mentally ill people as like zombies, though. <laughs> this is super creepy. started for the house. I went to get our car to take Marianne away. I do not know exactly when she slipped away from me. I assume that when they saw her in the dining room, the inmates believed her to be part of that household which they hated. And so, they killed her. Later, there was a celebration. And then most of the inmates fled. I don't know where. But I shall never forget what they did to my child. That Christmas, I have lived in prisons and asylums. 
lived anonymously as an animal. I have wandered in bitterness until all seasons have become as one. And that oh, is a season so of vengeance. Is the grandfather still alive? Wilfred Butler is still alive. Mm. This is still his house. Your grandfather died in 1950. He was burned to death in his house. My grandfather poured gasoline over a squatter he found here. The town wanted to believe he was dead. They still his house was an asylum. There was a massacre by the inmates. Tess, Toman, the sheriff. Oh. Your father. No. All inmates. They killed my so mother. So all the council people were the inmates of the asylum who killed the doctor's staff. Okay, that's why they all acted so strange at the council meeting. <laughs> Give him the gun because she wanted him to kill her dad? Why? Why? Sorry. Marianne. No! No! Don't run away. Don't. I'm your father. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. Please. So even at the end, the grandfather mistook this young girl for his daughter and wanted to abuse her. That is messed up. And now, a year later, they will tear down Wilfred Butler's monument. But they can never destroy my memories of what happened here. I guess I expected Silent Night, Bloody Night to be maybe a bit of a trashy movie, you know, the way some slasher movies can be sort of trashy or a bit bad, but it was actually really an impressive movie. It was beautifully photographed. The story was really interesting. It was suspenseful, intriguing. It kept you guessing at every step. The cast were fantastic. The photography was amazing. And I particularly loved the use of sepia film to show the flashbacks to the backstory. Just to give you some trigger warnings, this film does get into themes of incest and abuse, which, you know, are pretty disturbing. But overall, I thought Silent Night, Bloody Night was a really fascinating movie. For a slasher film, it's not that graphic. Most of the violence is kind of implied. We just see little glimpses of things. But that's really, I think, quite enough. And it really, you know, it doesn't go beyond my limits of gore. A lot of the horror in it is psychological. But if you're looking for a Christmas-themed horror movie with some really interesting and unusual story elements, I would highly recommend Silent Night, Bloody Night. It does succeed very well in creating an atmosphere of unease and of dread. 
<laughs> this may not be uplifting viewing for Christmas time, but maybe you don't feel like an uplifting movie at Christmas. If you want more of a, a nihilistic Christmas viewing experience, Silent Night, Bloody Night might just be the perfect film for you. If you've enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you would like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching today and Merry Christmas. I will see you next time.